Okay, so today we are going to learn about another group of invertebrates. And spiders are part of this group, but not the only part. So we're gonna start by looking at this book, Creepy Crawlies by S. Bourne K. And Kathy Kilpatrick is the author of this. We're just gonna look at one page here, okay? This section right here. So, this group of invertebrates belong to a group called arachnids. Unlike insects, they have eight legs and only one or two parts to their body, and they never have wings, okay? So here we've got a spider. We've got a mite. See how a spider has two parts to his body? A mite just has one. This is a harvestman or a daddy long legs. A true daddy long legs only has one section to his body, okay? So we think of daddy long legs as spiders, but they actually, are a different kind of um, arachnid, um, but there are a group of, of spiders that have a similar shape to a daddy long leg, and so we call daddy long leg spiders. But true daddy long legs are also called harvestmen, and they are not technically spiders because they only have one part of their body. And then here, We've got a scorpion. A scorpion is also an arachnid. We learned about scorpions when we talked about the desert, right? Okay, so. Now we're going to look at spiders in this book here. All right. Okay, this is Amazing Spiders. It's an eyewitness book. Look at that cool picture of a spider. This is by Alexandra Parsons. And like I said, we're just going to read a few pages of this book, not the whole thing. So what is a spider? There are about 30,000 different kinds of spiders in the world. They may look scary, but most of them don't harm people. They are important to the balance of nature because they eat so many insects. So sometimes we are scared of spiders, but really we shouldn't be. Very few spiders would hurt a person. And they eat lots of bugs and insects that bother us, like mosquitoes and house flies. So spiders are actually a pretty good thing. At preschool, you remember, we catch spiders and we take them outside instead of killing them. So here we can see the underside of a spider and we can see that spider's body, okay, and the major parts. So we've got up here, we've got palps or pedipalps. These little, um, almost look like legs here, but they're shorter. And those are feelers, kind of like antenna, but in the spider, they're shorter and they're called palps or pedipalps. And then Behind that are the fangs that they use to hold what they're going to eat, okay? And then we've got eight legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, all arachnids have eight legs. At the back is their spinnerets where they spin their webs from. And then there's two sections of their bodies like we were talking about with the Creepy Crawlies book, okay? This front section is a combination of their head and their thorax. Remember with an insect, we had a head and a thorax that were separate. In spiders, those are one piece. And so that piece is called a cephalothorax. Cephal means head. So it's the head and thorax stuck together. So cephalothorax, and you will see that their eyes and their legs are all attached to that same section. Okay, where with the insect, the eyes and antenna were on the head and the legs were on the thorax. In our spider model, they're all gonna be in the front section. 
like they are in a real spider. And then this section back here is the abdomen and the spinnerets on the back of the abdomen. All right, let's look at some cool parts of this spider. So a spider doesn't have bones, right? Because it's an invertebrate. So it has a tough outer skin or cuticle that acts as a protective outer skeleton. When their outer skeleton, right, when that outer skin gets too small because the spider has grown, it's hard outer, uh, it's, shh, let's see, as the spider grows, it's hard outer skin becomes too tight. It sheds the whole skin, first cracking it open on the back. You can see that right here, okay? And then climbing out of it, you see the spider pushing himself out of that old skin and climbing out. Cool, huh? Here is a close-up picture of the spinnerets. Spiders spin their silk with tiny organs called spinnerets. The silk starts as a sticky liquid, which hardens in the air to form a thread that is light but strong. Look up here at the spider's eyes. Most spiders have two rows of four eyes each, or eight eyes all together. Some of their eyes don't see very well, but they are spread around their heads usually so that they don't have to turn very much in order to be able to see and sense movement. Down here is a close-up of a spider's foot. Many spiders can walk up walls and across ceilings because they have special grip pads on their feet. You see those right there? To help them climb on the walls. The two main parts of, oh, I already read that part. Okay. Oh, this part is what I missed. Spiders have a eight legs. We've already talked about that with six joints each. So this part of your finger right here is a joint. This part here is a joint. This part here is a joint. This part here is a joint. Okay. It's the parts where it can bend and move. So spiders have six joints in every leg. So that is 48 knees, 48 joints around them. Okay. And that a lot is what allows their, um, their legs to bend almost like, or almost like they're rounded. All right, look at this cool spider. The most common spiders on earth are house spiders and garden spiders. If you see them, don't kill them. They help keep your house and garden free of bugs. The garden spider spins a beautiful spiral web designed to catch flying insects. The center is made of a special sticky silk, so insects that fly into it can't fly out. Here you can see a little house spider. That house spider makes a good pet. You won't have to feed it too often. A fly a day is more than enough. A spider needs water, so give it a damp sponge to suck. This spider carries her eggs with her, so some will lay their eggs and stick them to like the corner of a wall, but some female spiders lay their eggs in a silk cocoon. Then the spider carries it around with her, scurrying around her web with a ball of silk hanging from her abdomen. A spider's skin is covered in oil so that it won't stick to its own web. The most likely place to find a house spider is in your bathroom where they go in search of water. All right, now we're gonna skip and just do one last page from this book. This talks about how spiders weave their webs. So orb weaver spiders spin beautiful intricate webs. The webs are shaped like targets and are strung between two supports. So not all spiders or are orb weavers, but we often look at spider webs and that's kind of what we think of when we think of spiders, right? So we're gonna learn more about these webs. So this spider here almost looks like it's flying, doesn't it? Spiders don't have wings, so they can't actually fly, but 
Some tiny spiders are blown about by the wind. Using silk threads like little parachutes, they can travel on the breeze for hundreds of miles. Silk from the spider is so strong that if you made a steel thread, a steel is a really strong kind of metal. So if you made a steel thread as fine as a thread of spider silk, the silk would be three times stronger than the steel. Pretty cool, huh? Some people put a clean spider's web on a cut or a wound to stop the bleeding and to help the cut to heal. That's pretty neat. The bristles on the spider's legs help it feel vibrations in the air or on its web. Each kind of spider builds its own kind of web. The moment a spider hatches from its egg, it knows how to spin a certain pattern, just as you were born knowing how to cry and how to suck. Do you see this here? Okay, there is a spider called Nephilia that lives in a very hot country. The web it makes are so thick and so strong that the local people collect the webs and use them as fishing nets. Oh, that's cool. Can you imagine a spider web so strong that you could catch fish with it? That is really nifty. Okay, so now it is time for you to go on and do your spider activity. Okay, and, and you're going to review those parts of the spider. Have fun.